Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start the next topic in this subject of advanced accounting. The topic name is valuation of shares. In the previous videos, I have completed the topic valuation of goodwill. I have explained you the meaning, the factors to be considered and what is the need for calculating goodwill and what are the methods of calculating goodwill. All these things I have already explained in the previous videos. And almost uh, 15, 16 problems we have done on valuation of goodwill. So if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject advanced accounting new, watch the videos regarding the valuation of goodwill, be perfect. Now in this video, I'm going to explain you valuation of shares. There are two videos I'm going to upload on uh, the theory of valuation of shares. See here, the problems are based on the theory until and unless you're conceptually clear about the concepts, you should not go for the problems. And in examination, theory is also very important. So watch the video with full concentration from beginning till end. Don't skip in between and don't join in between. So take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain in detail. Now, first of all, what is the meaning of the term share? The capital of a limited liability company or a joint stock company is divided into a number of parts. Each such part is called a share. That means the total capital of the company is divided. For example, if the total capital is 10 lakh and we have divided rupees 10 lakh into 1 lakh parts, each part consists of 10 rupees. So one part 10 rupees, 1 lakh parts are there. So 10 rupees into 1 lakh, 10 lakh, that is the capital of the company. So simple words, share means the part of capital of a joint stock company. Now people will purchase and sell shares for many reasons. Different people will purchase or sell the shares with different reasons. The first reason may be the people will treat the shares as an investment. They are converting their cash into shares so that whenever they require the cash, they can sell away the shares in the market and get the cash. So as a form of investment, they are purchasing the shares. Secondly, there are some people who purchase the shares in order to get a return. Like wherever you make the investment, you will get the return. For example, if you invest the money in a bank, you will get the interest. If you invest the money in a business, you will get the profit. If you purchase a property and let out, you will get the rent. Similarly, if a person invests the money in shares, he will get the dividend. The dividend is the return. So for getting the return in the form of dividend, the people will buy the shares. Third, another class of uh, category of persons are there who invest in shares for speculative purpose. Speculation is the activity in which a person will take the advantage from the market. In the market, the share prices are not always uniform, stable. The share prices will fluctuate. For example, Mr. X, he forecast that in the next 3-4 months, the value of company's share XYZ company share is going to increase. Now immediately he will buy the shares. He will hold the shares for three months. After three months, he will sell the shares at a higher price. This is called speculation. Another person is there. He thinks that in the next three months, the value of the share is going to come down fast. Immediately he will sell away the shares. These are called speculators. So there are people, speculators, who invest in shares. They want to find out the value of shares. Now, all these category of persons are interested in finding out what is the value of the share. What is the value of the share? Every investor, whether he's an investor, he is investing to get the return, he's a speculator, every person is interested in finding out what is the value of the share. Now, the term value means for, uh, I mean, four types. 
the first is face value face value is the nominal value which is fixed by the promoters of the company when the company is floated the memorandum of association will be made in that memorandum of association it will be written what is the face value nominal value of each share and this face value will be written on the share certificate that is the the company will fix the face value market value the value which is fixed in the stock exchange the value the share value which is determined in the stock exchange by demand and supply forces that is called the market value this market value depends on the conditions of the market it will not be fixed by any person it will be it will be determined by the market demand and supply then intrinsic value intrinsic value of the share means the value of the share which depends on the net worth of the company net worth means assets and liabilities by considering the assets and liabilities we find out the net worth and according to the net worth we find out the value of share that value is called intrinsic value yield value the value of the share which is determined on the basis of yield or earning or profitability so we find the value according to the earning capability of the company according to the earning capacity of the company we calculate the value that is called the yield value in this way we have four types of values now need for cal valuation why we need to calculate the value of share the value of the share is i mean uh, already available when face value it is already there on the share certificate market value it is already there in the stock exchange intrinsic value yield value we can calculate then what is the need why we need to calculate the value of share in case of public limited company shares are generally quoted in the stock exchange see two types of companies are there public limited and private limited for public limited company the shares are already quoted in the stock exchange and in the stock exchange we can readily get the value of each share of all the quoted companies so readily available for ordinary transactions price prevailing in the stock exchange may be taken as the proper value for normal transactions when transaction to buy and sell the shares or in ordinary circumstances then we can take the market price the market value of the share which is fixed by the stock exchange then when shares are bought and sold in large lots the stock exchange value may not be taken as the proper value suppose in exceptional circumstances when we are buying a, the shares of the company in a larger lot in large quantity of shares we are buying and selling in that case we will not depend on the market price stock exchange price for ordinary transactions stock exchange price is proper but when bulk quantity of shares are purchased or sold that market value that is stock exchange value is not a proper value we have to determine the value shares of all public companies may not be quoted in the stock exchange there are two types of companies quoted and unquoted only the shares which are quoted in the stock exchange will have the market value whereas the company whose shares are unquoted in the stock exchange they will not have the market value we have to determine the value of the share then valuation of unquoted shares is also necessary for transferring shares from one person to another person if a company is holding a company's share which is unquoted in the stock exchange that means we cannot have we don't have the value of the share in that case there is a need to find out the value of the share when one person transfer the shares to another person for unquoted company shares then the shares of private company are not freely transferable hence cannot be dealt in the stock exchange two types of companies are there just now i told you public limited private limited the private limited company shares are not negotiable in the stock exchange it will not be listed in the stock exchange however the shares of private limited company can also be transferred from one person to another person subject to some terms and conditions hence it is necessary to ascertain the value of the share of private company so in a private company the share value we have to determine because market it is not available next for purpose of amalgamation and absorption schemes the price quoted in the stock exchange cannot be taken as correct value amalgamation 
when two companies two or more companies are wound up and a new company is formed or absorption where one company is absorbed by another company in the case of amalgamation and absorption again we cannot take the stock exchange value as the proper value only for ordinary transaction it is okay but for amalgamation absorption we have to determine the value of the share when a company is reconstructed it is necessary to value the share for acquiring the interest of dissenting shareholders sometimes a company will be reconstructed in the reconstruction scheme some of the dissenting shareholders are there the shareholders who, who will not give the approval for reconstruct reconstruction in that case the amount has to be paid to the dissenting shareholders in that case again we have to find out the value of the share next it becomes necessary to value the shares for compensating shareholders on the acquisition of the shares by the government under scheme of nationalization nationalization is a scheme where a company is taken over by the government earlier it was in the private sector now it will become a public sector company now whenever a company makes nationalization the company has to pay compensation to the shareholders now again for paying compensation to the shareholders there is a need to calculate the value of the share next when shares of one class are converted into shares of another class we have different classes of shares sometimes a company will convert one class into another class in that circumstance again there is a need for calculating value of share last one for security purpose when loans are raised normally what will happen when a business takes a loan from bank <clears throat> we have to give the security the banker will ask the security in that case shares may be deposited as security but the loan depends on the value of the security that means what is the value of the shares which are given as security to the bank for raising the loan in that circumstance again we need what is the value of the share so these are some of the circumstances which require the valuation of shares now factors affecting the value of shares what are the factors that affect the value of shares first one capital employed this is the first and foremost requirement for calculating the value of the share capital employed in the business secondly earning capacity or profitability of the business the profitability will not be same for every business it will differ from industry to industry company to company we need what is the rate of profitability what is the earning rate of the profits last one normal rate of return what is the rate of return normally investors expects from particular industry every industry has an average rate of return called normal rate of return for example pharmaceutical industry textile industry chemical industry or uh, information technology industry we have different types of industry every industry will have a certain average rate of return that is called normal rate of return so three things we require capital employed earning uh, rate rate of earnings and the normal rate of return so these three factors we require to calculate the value of the share in case of companies going for going into liquidation the net assets of the company is most important in case of amalgamation or absorption one company is being wound up it is going in liquidation when a company goes into liquidation at that time it is better to consider the net assets to calculate the value of the share that means intrinsic value method that is the best method for a company which is being bound up then in case of going concern both earning capacity and net assets are considered for valuation of shares if a company is a going concern it is not wind up not going to be wind up in that case either we can go through by yield method or you can go through by intrinsic value method now methods of valuation now i am coming to the very important topic that is what are the methods available for calculating the value of share now these methods we are going to apply in the coming problems so give more concentration focus on my lecture now first method is net assets basis or intrinsic value method most of the problems are based on this first method 
नेट एसेट्स बेसिस और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू मेथड और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एसेट्स बैकिंग मेथड और ब्रेकअप वैल्यू मेथड नेम्स आर डिफरेंट बट द मेथड इज सेम in some problem it will call it as net assets method some problem it will be it will call it as intrinsic value or breakup value all these things means intrinsic value the value which is based on the net assets of the company that's it second earning capacity or yield basis and more uh, 50% problems are on intrinsic value remaining 50% problems are on yield value earning capacity or yield basis third method is also their dual method fair value method actually it is not an independent method it is a combination of the first two methods simply we calculate what is the intrinsic value and secondly we calculate what is the yield value so intrinsic value plus yield value divided by 2 you will get the fair value or dual method not an independent method but the combination of the first two methods that's it these are the three methods now first i am going to discuss about the net assets method or intrinsic value method the points to be remembered while applying this intrinsic value method the first point fixed tangible assets should be revalued at their net realizable value see them when we are applying that this net assets basis or intrinsic value method first of all we take into account all the assets and all the liabilities assets minus liability will get net worth right so we have to find out what is the value of each of the asset so first we take fixed assets next we we'll take current assets the fixed assets are again of two categories tangible fixed assets and intangible fixed assets so for tangible fixed assets we revalue the assets we will not take the balance sheet value example in the balance sheet the machinery value is 2 lakh rupees but if we sell the machinery in the market it will fetch only 1 lakh 50000 so we have two values one balance sheet value one market value realizable value so while calculating the net worth we should take the net realizable value we should not take the market value whether realizable value is more or less doesn't matter we take the net realizable value for tangible fixed assets like building machinery furniture equipment motor vehicle etc secondly intangible assets intangible assets like goodwill patent copyright trademark etc brands etc these are the intangible assets again intangible assets will be taken at its net realizable value net realizable value inventories that is a current asset we have discussed about fixed assets now i am coming to the current assets so inventories should be taken at the current market price inventories we have the balance sheet value and also the market value ha huh? if the market price is not given then we can take the balance sheet value but whenever market price is given always take the market price whether it is more or less than the book value next one is uh, investment which are quoted in stock exchange should be taken at current market price after inventories suppose short term investments are there so when taking the investment see what is the market price in the stock exchange that market price we take into account now sundry tas bills receivable etc should be valued at the net expected realizable value sundry tas or trade receivables the amount due from customers or bills receivable in case of debtors bills receivable trade receivable we will take what is the net expected realizable value <coughs> example in the balance sheet debtors are given 5 lakh rupees but according to the company management the company may not recover complete 5 lakh rupees out of 5 lakh 50000 are irrecoverable bad debts so deduct bad debts so 5 lakh minus 50000 4 lakh 50000 will take the debtors next one is all fictitious assets should be eliminated remember fictitious assets means imaginary assets not real assets 
Examples of fictitious assets are preliminary expenses, discount on issue of shares, discount on issue of debentures, accumulated losses. These are the items normally it will be given on the asset side. But it is called the fictitious asset. Don't take fictitious assets, eliminate. Next one is all unrecorded assets and liability are taken into account. Sometimes in the problem, in adjustment, it will be given some of the some of the assets are not recorded in the balance sheet. Now you have to account. Similarly, some liabilities are there which are unrecorded. Now we record the liabilities. Preference share capital along with areas of dividend should be deducted. So what you have done? You have taken all the assets. From all the assets, preference share capital along with arrears of preference dividend should be deducted. The balance left is the amount available. First of all, we have not deducted the external liabilities. From the aggregate value of the assets, all external liabilities should be deducted. This point we forgot. First, we we'll take all the assets values. From assets value, deduct the external liabilities. The external liabilities are debentures, trade payable, sundry creditors, bills payable, outstanding expenses, provision for taxation. These are the external liabilities. Deduct the external liability, then deduct the preference share capital along with areas of dividend. The balance left available is called amount available for equity shareholders. Right? Divide this amount available for equity shareholders by the number of equity shares. The resultant figure is the value of each equity share. So first we have taken all the assets values, take the total minus external liabilities, deduct all external liability, deduct the preference share capital along with any arrears of preference dividend. Resulting figure is called the amount available for equity shareholders. Divide this amount available for equity shareholders by number of equity shares. We will get the value of each equity share. The formula for calculating value of each equity share according to intrinsic value is amount available for equity shareholders or we can say net to worth divided by number of equity shares. That's all. In this way, we can be able to calculate the value of each equity share according to intrinsic value. So in this video, I've explained you the meaning of the term share. What is the need of calculating the value of share? Then what are the factors to be considered for valuation of shares and what are the methods? First method, intrinsic method I have explained. In the next video, in detail, I will uh, give the format how to calculate the intrinsic value. Then we discuss about the earning capacity method. So if you are interested, if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video, share my channel among your friends, among your groups so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Give your comments. Subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we will continue our discussion on this valuation of shares in the next video.